why weren't they making detailed action figures? I don't, you know what? I don't know. The guys that are sculpting for my company, they love Aliens and Predator. They love Terminator. You can't imagine how enthused they are. Making toys, you're always trying to go, how can we make this the most interesting? So a couple things that we, we strive for, not unlike what I did in comic books, which are, what are the key moments of this movie? What are, what is the body language at those ones? Which scenes in a movie are gonna resonate in the, in, the, in the audience's mind when they walk out of there. Which lines are they gonna reiterate over and over and go, oh yeah, yeah. So we try to capture that golden moment. There's a great scene with Arnie where he's, he's got, and please go watch your movie because I might spoil something here. So stop, go watch your movie if you haven't already. Uh, he's, got the, he's got the casket on his shoulder and he's sort of using it as a shield. So it gets all shot up, you know, bing, 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 bing. Oh my gosh, you know, Arnie's doomed. He's gonna get killed or there's a dead body in there or something. And then there's the golden moment where he puts down the casket and you think, oh my gosh. And then he opens it up and there's like an arsenal of guns inside. And you go, those guys are SOL now because the Terminator, he's loaded, right? So here's the casket and again, He's been shot at, so don't do it before the fight. Do it in the middle of the fight. Some of the people here that work for me thought, oh, cool, just a little casket. If anything, they thought there was gonna be a body in it or something else. But they were all surprised when they opened it up and they got to see that, that not only is the arsenal in there, but a lot of the stuff actually comes out and you can sort of, you know, you don't get to put it on Arnie, but it's just the stuff that's actually in the movie. We come up with those moments and then we send those sketches off to get approved. Once we do that, we start sculpting in a pink clay. And then when I got the body language, now go to the detail. Like, I don't care about his boots and the rivets on his jacket unless we got the body down. So get the body down and now put the clothes on it. So then we get in there and now we try to a, actually get photo reference, or we actually go to the wardrobe set and take as much reference of the, of the, the gear that they wear. There's always a staff photographer, if you will, at every shoot for a PR, just for archives, for referencing. You know, I'm always asking, can I see all of those photos? And they go, well, we'll pick a couple for you. No, 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 no. I wanna look through them myself. So myself and my head toy guy, we went. Because what we're looking for sometimes might not be what you think we're looking for. I need a close-up of her bracelet. It's sort of a dull photo of a hand and a, and a okay, cool, I, I need that. You know, I need, I need the clothes. I need to see sort of what their body's like. We probably pulled that first day 400 photos. There's n never too much information you can have when you're actually trying to replicate something. One of the things that may be a little bit odd with, uh, with our company is that my R&D department, research and development, is in New Jersey, and I live here in Phoenix. It's not as big a hindrance as people may think. I have a video link up. Hi, Todd. Then we just pop on the TV, and I get them to show it to me. You wanted to turn that down a little bit, but as far as you're concerned, are we okay here? And sometimes I either, you know, have a piece of paper and I draw it and I, and I turn it up to the screen like this. I show them the acting over the screen and they'll actually just bend it right there. And they go, okay, we can see you, Todd. How about like this? And I go, no, nah, look, like I want the chin down on the shoulder a little bit more and they'll move it. And I go, yeah, yeah, that's it right there. Then we get the sculpt done right. We go and get approval of that. We can usually do it from our beginning to customer buying it in about 10 months. In Hollywood, you have staged lighting. And a toy that's gonna be under a fluorescent light at a, at a toy store or some other place, record store, this guy is standing there in, in all his regalia, and you get to actually stop and look at him and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So it better look cool. For instance, if he's got this belt that's open right here, and he's got the little eyelets in there, we make sure that we paint all of those. If he's got, again, here, straps on his boot and a zipper that's open there, plus he's got a chain, on the back of his boots. The Krishana figure here comes with uh, two hands because she does some morphing, as you've seen, where she goes like this and it goes and she's got the, the cybernetics in here. So when you buy this toy, you can actually pop this, this arm off here. It's got a little bit of a mushroom cap. And then we've actually got a uh, 
flesh arm in there, a normal hand. So if you just want to have her completely human, if you will, you can do that. But if you want to do a little bit of a, of a, of a morphing, because to me it's a little bit interesting to just sort of give a tease of what she looks like a little bit later on in the movie, you can pop that one in there. Well, who wouldn't want a little Arnie, bad boy Arnie, sitting on top of their computer? When people come into their house or they go to their, their workstation, they don't go, hey, Jim, is that an Arnold toy? Are you now a geek and are gonna collect toys and are mentally arrested? Are you now getting immature? That's not how it goes. You know how it goes? They see this Arnold toy there and a guy comes in and he goes, Jim, is that Arnold? Did you see that T3 movie? Remember that scene when he had the big bazooka? And then remember like eight years ago when they were talking about doing T3 and the first time I saw the Liquid Man in T2? Oh my gosh, you know? It's not a geek thing why people buy this stuff. It's no different than the books that they have around their computer or at home or the shirts that they wear with favorite teams or bands or even tattoos or the hats that they have with logos. It just is stuff, it's clutter around their environment that basically says, this is who I am, and this is what I like as an individual. It's just stuff that we like, it's pop culture, and it, you don't have to read any more into it than that. I've been asked many times to do video games. I always felt like this doesn't look like me. I mean, this is not my face. So I always stayed away from that if it is not my likeness or if it doesn't do the movie justice. I did have a thought that they would probably make a video game. I would be the uh, predator since I am the bad guy in the film. There's so many corners and recesses of the Terminator mythology that you can explore. And a movie lets you explore a certain number of them, but you only have two hours in a movie. In a video game, you have as much time as you want to spend. It allows you to explore all the areas and aspects of the story that you yourself might be interested in. I think a lot of video games that are done that are based on movies might not use a lot of the scenes from the movies, a lot of the characters. In this, it's sort of a continuation of the movie. In order to be different, I think it, it is about the quality, it's about the playability, it's about the story, it's about the characters. And I think we've given them the kind of ammunition that allows that to happen. What we all wanted out of it is to try to be as faithful to the story of the film after a certain point. And then you give them, you know, the flexibility to go and explore things that are maybe mentioned in the movie. The wonderful thing is that the gaming industry and the movie industry, especially the science fiction, fantasy, and horror movie industry genre, the audiences are the same. In today's world, the mind of the kid who loves this type of movie loves games. What happens with a lot of these video games is that the companies just sort of piggyback onto the movie and they release a video game that has the title of the movie and some visual content of it, but basically is just sort of an afterthought. And what's great about what Atari and Black Ops did in the case of Terminator 3 is early on we said, you know, we're going to do a video game. We want to make it a world-class video game. We share all of our design tools everything that we use, all of our characters, full-size puppets, full-size animatronics, and information from our digital designs uh, with anyone who needs it, be it houses that are going to create the digital effects, or in a case like this, the gaming division. The backgrounds, the sets, all of the things that, that help make the movie will help make the video game even better. We worked really very closely with the video game developers to make sure that the game was a full experience of seeing the movie and not just some sort of afterthought that a video game company was dumping out in the marketplace. John Connor, it is time.
We did actually shoot one scene if we wanted to put in the video game. It makes the game even more real than a game, you know? It makes it like movie plus. It's a scene that helps the audience understand how the Terminator came to be. Hi, I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Why is Terminator always coming back from the future with the same body, with the same accent, the same look? It clears up the mystery about the mythology of the Terminator, about how this machine became the machine and why it looks like Arnold. It is now within our power to make war safe. And that is truly priceless. I don't know about that accent. We can fix it. TX is the latest, most sophisticated cyborg model. Obviously, she's a woman, so she's got some new powers and traits and definitely plays upon her femininity to achieve her goals. She is equipped with all kinds of weapons that she can produce from out of her body. It makes her a very fierce competitor than a much more sophisticated Terminator, I would say. The design of the TX was probably our most important job on Terminator 3. She had to be stronger than Arnold, more advanced than Arnold, and fit under the skin of Kristana Loken. The TX is more powerful, is stronger, is faster, has more capabilities. Oh my god! Frankly, you're kind of outmatched, so it's pretty tricky how you manage to get around the obstacles that she throws at you during the game. It's beyond me that it took us three movies to realize that the baddest of all Terminators is going to be a female. She's definitely got uh, a few tricks up her sleeve. You have storylines that are occurring in the future, storylines that occur in the present, storylines in the past. For a movie, it's very hard to bounce around between all those different time frames. But the great thing about a video game is you can explore all those different dimensions. So the thing that had me really excited about the video game is that here's a chance for us to explore all these different timelines in a parallel format. And I think that's incredibly exciting, simply from a storytelling point of view. Of course, it makes for a great game as well. But it's a wonderful companion with the movie itself. The game the basic premise in general is we're actually mirroring the movie in addition to adding some sequences that are normally off screen or away from the movie. You'll be able to basically get uh, the full feel of what it's like to be in that future post-Holocaust nuclear war with the Skynet sort of dominating the skies and, and in the communication systems, things like that. This is the first time on the video games that we actually integrate uh, the classic first-person shooter uh, gameplay with the hand-to-hand -hand combat. We will actually have full game levels and full environments in which you are playing Arnold in a first-person shooting mode where you are utilizing multiple weapons to complete various objectives but then in specific encounters, you actually jump into the role where the camera switches from a first person view and swings out to a third person perspective and you're actually fighting the TX and you're using hand-to-hand -hand combat moves. It's like a mini fighting game where you get to pick the TX up and hurl her into a wall and break something. You actually get to pick up a rocket launcher. You get to pick up a phased plasma rifle. You get to fight all the forces of Skynet that you've never been able to do before. With the hand-to-hand -hand combat, we basically have really been able to sort of follow certain scenes in the movie that are really kind of thrilling, where there's these fights between Arnold and the TX. We got uh, some of the best guys in Hollywood, the stunt guys, these smash kit guys, put these guys on wires, and we're able to simulate what it would be like to be a Terminator and take a, another big infiltrator Terminator, and pick him up in the air, and then throw him into a wall with all that weight and force. Arnold is a Terminator, and the TX is a Terminator. They do not know kung fu. They fight like a machine would fight. Rigid, bashing maneuvers, shoves, grabs, throws, etc. If you play the game, it makes you more interested in seeing the movie. And if you see the movie, it makes the game a much richer experience to play. I think that the video game adds a lot to the mythology of the Terminator. Video games have become so advanced. The kid that's playing it is watching the movie and operating their own characters within the movie. So I think it's become so realistic and so enticing. It's like watching the movie that you can control. I'm a gamer. I love playing games, and I'm always looking for the new one. I can't wait to play as much, get as much play time as I can on T3 the game. I love the way uh, in my image looks, the way the Terminator looks, and also it does justice to the movie. All these graphics are like just so realistic. All the faces look just like real life. It's pretty amazing. 
The best way to describe it would be like two bulldozers just going at it. Just sheer force, sheer strength. None of that Hong Kong fooey shit. Just, just brutal force. It is fantastic. It looks great and everyone will enjoy it. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, available now.